Thank you, sir. Uh, welcome back, participants. Welcome, Dr. S. K. Sharma. This lecture is on use of construction and demolition waste in road sector. Presented by Dr. S. K. Sharma. He has graduated civil engineering from Punjab Engineering College, Chandigarh, in year 2007, and PhD in civil engineering from IIT Roorkee in year 2015. His core area of research is highway materials and rigid pavements. He is having long experience of nearly 7.5 years in academics, consultancy, research, and he has more than 40 research papers in his credit published in national and international conferences and journals. He has presented his research work in nearly 25 national and international conferences. Dr. Sharma has delivered expert lectures on pavement materials. rehabilitation and retrofitting of pavements use of waste materials in pavement construction etc in various institutions across the country he has been invited to chair technical session and deliver keynote lectures in the past dr sharma is actively involved in various design and cons consultancy services for public and private organizations he has organized three stc related to the role of materials in construction at dr b r ambedkar national institute of technology jalandhar presently two phd research scholars and seven mtech students are working under him he has guided more than 12 mtech students until now he is a member of various scientific and technical societies like irc indian concrete institute asce etc uh, welcome dr sharma uh, uh, thank you for agreeing to deliver this lecture thank you sir yes, thank you thank you uh, dr ankit patuda and i would like to uh, give my sincere regards to the head of department uh, at iit jammu uh, for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my views on the use of construction and addition waste in road construction am i audible enough yes sir we can hear you sir very loud and clear yeah thank you thank you very much uh, good morning a good yeah it would be now yes good afternoon to all of the participants uh, today i would be talking on the topic of the use of construction and demolition waste in road construction so this is my first slide as you can see here uh, the construction and demolition waste could be of four types it could be from excavated soil it could be from road work waste from demolition waste and from complex works etc okay so depending on the type of uh, the source from where we are getting the construction and demolition waste we can make a scheme of utilizing this thing okay uh, if it is from excavated soil then it could be used in the subgrade of the uh, road if it is from uh, road work waste okay then depending on its size as well as quality it could be used in the base or subgrade if it is demolition waste then maximum percentage of this material could be used uh, for uh, base construction uh, in the case of flexible or rigid pavements and also if it is a complex thing then we have to first screen out the materials which are not uh, uh, required in the pavement construction and uh, afterwards the rest of the material could be used for the pavement construction work okay so as this thing is quite broad we cannot say that whatever material we are getting we directly use that in the pavement we have to first make a strategy out of this so my presentation would be uh, divided into two parts first part uh, would highlight that uh, what is the need of using this thing in the pavements and the second part would first uh, discuss the road properties the pavement properties which are needed uh, even for construction demolition waste to be used and then uh, we would discuss that in what forms in uh, uh, what percentage these materials and in what shape these materials could be used in the various layers of the pavement so uh, going on with the second slide that is uh, uh, a kind of picture which uh, shows four kind of scenarios as you can see here uh, 
on the right hand side topmost corner there has been a payment work uh, which has been done and recently a fresh concrete has been a fresh payment has been laid and you can see that uh, the um, various debris and various uh, uh, layers of the payments which have been removed for laying the new payment so these things these things are like very mixed and uh, very variety of things are here and uh, definitely before using this thing as such we have to first clean it out we could see metals we could see uh, aggregates we could see mortar here so it is of very variety and that's that is the main problem that we face while uh, making use of uh, this material as such in the payment construction if uh, it is of pure nature like this then it could be used just by crushing it and then by again uh, screening it and then uh, it could be put in the various layers of the payment but uh, if it is of mixed variety then definitely we have to first make it sure that the material is screened and it is reclaimed uh, as per its size requirement now the composition of cnd waste in india i have even uh, included the municipal solid waste because uh, it also consists of 21.7 percent of construction and dimension waste so nearly one fifth of it is also being composed of this thing but uh, yes if we talk uh, uh, only about the construction and dimension waste as you can see here uh, we are having a very large chunk of uh, uh, the soil sand and gravel which has been excavated from the sites for construction work okay and then left uh, vacant there then we are also having very large chunk of uh, this bricks and masonry waste so these two kind of waste are uh, maximum in number from the building and construction works okay and uh, the third one it could come from which is the concrete one it could come from payment construction as well as from building constructions work so if we are having that waste which are originating from the these three sources then we are totally getting about uh, you can say uh, 80 to 90 percent of the waste so this kind of waste could definitely be used now the question is why we need to use this waste can't we dump this material can't we uh, reclaim some land spaces where the construction has to uh, be done and this could be used for land filling purposes why is this so that we are more constructed and we are more interested in using this material for again reconstruction purpose so in the coming slides i would be asking this question uh, but first of all uh, i would like to uh, focus the attention on uh, the grave situation or the alarming situation of uh, uh, the increasing amount of construction demolition waste in india as you can see here in gurugram 800 million tons of uh, this material is being produced and this source is uh, from uh, some journal where uh, it was uh, even uh, talked in the terms of uh, you can say uh, the importance of recycling this thing to a maximum level uh, so i would not go into that thing that uh, why we need more recycling plants but yes i would be giving you some solutions regarding even if it is not recycled how it could be used and like that because most of the um, portion of this material as i have talked in the previous slide like this is of uh, sand soil and sand nature as well as uh, bricks and masonry nature which could be used as such in the subway so if we are uh, just uh, screening this material right at the stage when it is lying there over the uh, over the vacant spaces uh, right there if we screen this out then only this material is left for recycling so this could also solve the purpose of recycling but yeah uh, this slide is showing us the need of recycling that 800 million tons of this material is being produced at gurugram and out of that 300 million tons is being uh, like uh, that it, it is being recycled in the recycling plant so a uh, lot of uh, material is left vacant then in delhi you can see uh, 7000 million tons is being uh, produced and uh, out of that uh, actually it is the, the figure is 2650 but uh, 
yeah now we are using more recycling plants in delhi so uh, we can say that 4150 now it is being recycled so even then about 3000 million tons is left in ahmedabad you can see here 700 is the construction and demolition waste generation where the recycling plant has a capacity of 1000 so that's a good thing and mumbai we are having this scenario and like this uh, everywhere so uh, the situation is quite grave in uh, pune okay kolkata uh, where it is very dense uh, hyderabad very dense chennai half then bangalore it is very grave situation so if we see the overall situation of uh, india then we can say a very large chunk of uh, the material is uh, lying there and it is being used directly for dumping at the site okay we without recycling because recycling plants have very less capacity so the material is just put uh, for uh, used for this dumping in the waste lands so this is how the material is being dumped okay if it is not recycled after recycling also some of the material is being dumped but a very less proportion of material is left after recycling to be dumped so uh, if we are dumping the material as such okay if we are dumping it as such then what is the consequence we are having three kind of consequences first is the material loss we are already trying to conserve natural aggregates and uh, if we are facing the problem of uh, their conservation so definitely this about uh, 50 to 60% or i would say like i have even told you that about 80% of this material has been wasted by us if we are just dumping it so uh, material loss is the first thing second point is uh, that every landfill is uh, going to leak eventually we are dumping the material then we are uh, uh, just uh, we are just covering it but it is not leak proof actually uh, whenever rain falls everything happens and along with other uh, plastics and other material uh, this this site could act as a leaching ground where the material uh, debris etc and organic debris will accumulate and later on what will happen Uh, this will cause uh, a potential hazard uh, for the underground water as well as uh, uh, it can also harm the uh, you can say drinking uh, sources if we uh, see the third point uh, you can see here uh, that if we are dumping this material uh, actually what would happen uh, the water would be contaminated because of uh, heavy metals and other uh things which are there in the uh, site so overall the situation says that we should not we should not dump dump this material as such we have to first recycle it uh but uh the plants do not have that much capacity and even energy is being used for their recycling so uh if you could see here uh, the situation of delhi i was already talking about uh, about one third about 38% yes about 38% of the material uh, is uh, being uh, recycled and uh, other material is left for dumping material needs to be firstly screened out at the site itself okay then the rest of the material has to be sent to the uh plants for recycling otherwise this situation will remain now what happens at the recycling plant as you can see here we collect the material then we manually sort it uh, we take out the uh, other screenings like uh, metals and other things being screened out then uh, after that the material is trauma screened okay so where uh, um, like mortar and other things uh, large chunks they are being separated from the aggregates okay we obtain the material in two forms either in the powder form uh, or coarse aggregate or fine aggregate form and in the coarse aggregate form so the material is being now here in these two stages the material is being shredded and screened and uh, then uh, the material is uh, 
processed into two types uh, one is of fine aggregate form and one is of a coarse aggregate form and then it is being again used so uh, this is what i was talking about that the 23 percent of uh, material uh, which is which could be used beneficially uh, for uh, base courses and uh, sub base courses that material could be obtained okay uh, from the recycling plant and uh, rest of the material rest of the material could directly be used in the sub grade construction this will not overburden the recycling plants also now this slide shows that how complex the working in recycling plant is uh, if uh, okay yeah i will try to run the slide also uh, this presentation also on So as you can see here, the recycling plant is uh, screening the material uh, into coarse aggregate and fine aggregate. And uh, along with this, the washing of the material is also taking place so that we do not uh, uh, get uh, uh, some kind of deleterious material or organic material. Uh, this is quite necessary because uh, such kind of things are uh, definitely going to reduce the, uh, you can say, strength criteria or you can see um, the mechanical properties of the aggregates. So what the recycling plants do is being shown here, you are producing something, you are demolishing something, again, it is going like this. So this is kind of quite sustainable construction you are using that material and again and again yeah there would be some loss of the material in between but yes if we are uh, following this cycle definitely we are uh, making uh, the process more sustainable and uh, definitely we are conserving the environment also in this way so that is the need of the uh, r but yes uh, since we need a lot of uh, uh, infrastructure for uh, recycling this thing so uh, that's why 
it is always recommended that some portion of the material and i would suggest that about 50 to 60 percent of that material could be again reused at the site in the form of a uh, subgrade so that would quite solve the purpose of uh, the lower capacity of uh, the recycling plants now coming over to the essential part which is that uh, uh, that how this material could be used uh, for uh, uh, the flexible payments. If you can see here, uh, we are having two kind of criteria for the use of a certain material. One is the rutting criteria and one is the uh, fatigue cracking criteria. Okay, here what happens due to the application of the load, the base layers, they develop the tensile strains at the bottom. Okay, whereas uh, uh, the rutting criteria says that uh, the vertical strains over the subway they have to be limited okay so uh, the code says uh, that it should be less than 20 mm okay and uh, this thing 20 percent of the uh, area should not be cracked so these are the two uh, indices which are being used uh, by the code for uh, evaluating the fatigue life of the uh, payment as well as the rutting life of the payment Okay, along with that, we could see here that uh, the cement treated base layer has also been evaluated for uh, the tensile stains. Okay, so uh, if we are using uh, cement treated base also, then we have to check the fatigue of this layer also. Otherwise, if we are using a granular material here, then uh, we need to we do not need to check this thing this whole layer would be counted as a single layer and we have to just check the uh, vertical strains over the subgrade okay so uh, but still we are using this thing because in this layer in in this layer we could make maximum use of the uh, recycled based material so that's why this layer is nowadays being preferred mostly and it is uh, uh, easy to be made also and uh, even it will satisfy the strength characteristics so definitely we have to look for this option in the case of a flexible payment apart from that the uh, construction and demolition waste could even be used in the bituminous layer uh, but the condition of uh, the limiting strains should be there and along with that uh, here we can have uh, that kind of material which is of superior quality uh, the that kind of construction demolition waste, like the one which is being obtained from uh, uh, the demolition of buildings, the bigger size aggregates, uh, not so big, bigger, that means uh, uh, the aggregate size should be lesser than 19 mm. And those kind of aggregates could be used because they would be uh, having good strength uh, and uh, uh, under uh, load, whereas uh, other kind of uh, material which is having size lesser than 10 mm that material is itself uh, uh, somewhat disintegrated and if we are using that material even in the bituminous layer then there would be chances that under repetitive loading that material would uh, uh, start crushing and uh, that would lead to overall rutting of this bituminous layer also so uh, depending on the size as well as the quality of the material we have to uh, we have to make it sure that under which layer it has to be used uh, if we move forward we could see, see here uh, that uh, if we are if we are using soil uh, separate as a separate then the value of resilient borders of the soil should be uh, 100 it, it is a maximum limit okay so uh, the soil characteristics are studied in the form of resilient modulus. This resilient modulus value could be calculated even from the CBR. Now, what is this resilient modulus? I would like to first mention this thing because it is having very close relationship with the use of uh, construction and demolition waste in the payments. Uh, we have seen this thing, how we calculate the CBR value of the subgrade at the site. Uh, there is UCS test also. This test would also be used. Uh, not talking about the resilient modulus. What is resilient modulus? It is just kind of a, a elastic modulus uh, for repetitive loading. 
in case of static loading, elastic modulus is there, and in case of uh, repetitive loading, we can use the term resident modulus. So, uh, with the growing amount of uh, repetitions, what would happen? Uh, the plastic strain starts accumulating. Okay, and recoverable strains they uh, they start diminishing. So uh, now resonant modulus is if if we talk only about uh, you can say the strength, then it is uh, uh, the ratio of deviated stress to the resonant strain. Now this thing is quite controversial. What I would like to say this thing. Because if a certain material is having very good resonant modulus, and I'm talking mainly about bituminous layer right now. If a material is having a very good value of resonant modulus, if a bituminous layer is having good value of resonant modulus, then that means it is uh, uh, giving more deviator stress for a unit uh, resonant strain. Okay, and that means, uh, in other words, we can say the resonant strain should be lesser and uh, for a given uh, resident stain, the amount of diabetes test value should be more. Okay, uh, but that does not mean that the bituminous layer uh, which is being used in the pavement that should have a, a very lesser amount of resident stains. We prefer using that kind of bituminous mix in the base course which is having good fatigue life and good fatigue life is resembled by the uh, you can say ductility or flexibility of the bituminous layer. And if it is not showing good resilient strains, okay, if it is not showing good resilient strains and it is showing more permanent strains, even if it is showing good debutor stress for a given resilient strain, then that material, that bituminous mix should not be preferred. So uh, even if when we see the code, uh, then uh, as per IRC 37 to you can see that um, the fatigue life in the formula for fatigue life, the value of resident borders uh, is in the denominator. It is not, that means the uh, fatigue life of the bituminous layer, bituminous base layer is uh, kind of inverse, having inverse relationship with the resident borders. Okay, because we need to make sure that the amount of uh, uh, resident stains are more and plastic stains are less. That's why uh, we are uh, not saying properly that in case of bituminous, in case of, please mind it, in case of bituminous uh, mixes, the value of resident modulus uh, could be smaller also. Okay, so uh, that is uh, the major thing. Whereas in case of other materials, in case of other layers, the value of resident borders should be higher. Like uh, sub-base cores, uh, the soil subgrade, there the value of resident borders should be higher. The more the value of the resident borders in that case, the more is uh, the more the material is reliable. Now, what is the problem with the uh, construction and demolition waste? That I will tell you, uh, but let's talk about now sub-base. In case of sub-base also, you can see that the value of a resilient modulus that has to be taken into account for the design okay if even if it is uh, some granular surface and if we talk about cement treated surface then uh, we have to we have to see the value of elastic modulus okay so this is this is what i am telling you uh, if the material is unbound, then we are definitely going for the value of resonant borders. The construction and demolition waste has a lower value of resonant borders than uh, natural aggregates. Okay, but if we are treating that material in the base course with the cement or other things, then we are not looking for the value of resonant borders. We are looking for the value of uh, uh, modulus of elasticity okay and uh, depending upon the use of or the content of cement or other stabilizing material we could ensure that uh, the value of elastic modulus is higher so that the material uh, so that the overall material could be used uh, as a base some base layer okay so in case of a cement treated surfaces also we could use a demolition based it could be demolition waste could also be used here also, but uh, 
the value of resonant modulus will not be approachable. So yeah, if the material is of good quality, then definitely we could look for this thing. And here, the value of a, a resonant modulus has a range of 200 to 300 MPa. Okay, for soil, the value was uh, uh, up to 100 MPa, whereas in case of uh, subbases, it is from 200 to 300 MPa. And if we talk about cement treated subbases, then the value of modulus of elasticity that should be from 2000 to 6000 MPa. For heavy traffic, it is 6000 MPa. So uh, this is how we could we could distinguish, we could make a comparison that where that material could be used and in what form, whether it should be treated or whether it should be used as a granular material itself. Okay, then moving forward, uh, the possibility of using this material in the base course. Now, again, I would suggest that we use this material in the form of a cement treated bases also. Uh, rather than the granular base, uh, because here uh, the demolition waste that uh, will uh, lead to, uh, you can say, uh, impermeable, uh, sorry, permeable bases, and uh, uh, it would be having more water retention capacity also. So uh, actually what would happen, uh, this kind of thing will uh, definitely cause uh, uh, the distresses due to uh, moisture absorption in the base layers. So uh, if we are treating the construction and demolition waste and then using it, then definitely as per strength as well as durability criteria, we could uh, satisfy the pavement construction. Uh, though we could achieve the resident modulus even with the pro uh, good quality uh, construction and demolition waste, but we should go for cement treatment here or fly ash could be used, etc. Also, even the construction demolition waste also has some proportion of uh, mortar still left over the aggregate surface, uh, which uh, has not uh, hydrated and uh, which could participate in the uh, in giving the strength to that material after 28 days. So we could, we should go for this option, uh, and we have to make sure that the value of uh, uh, modulus of elasticity for uh, this case should be greater than 5,000 megapascal, okay? And along with that, in case of basis, we have to make sure of other criteria also, which is the flexible strength criteria. This is the criteria. This criteria is not there in case of cement treated sub basis, but in case of cement treated basis, we have to make sure that the value of modulus of rupture, which is indicative of the flexible strength, that should have uh, these limiting values at least like we have have we could have these values 1.40 megapascals 1.05 megapascal and with soil cement mix we could have this much definitely if we are using soil cement mixture then we have to provide thicker payment uh, thicker layer of ctv and for other material we could go for thinner uh, base courses okay so uh, in the base courses, I was mentioning that we have to check the durability also. Here, most of the uh, construction demolition waste fails because the loss on freezing and thawing should be lesser than 14% after 12 cycles as per BIS for CC2. So the construction and demolition waste itself has a lot of uh, voids and uh, because of the mortar sticking over their surface and they have a wet, um, very good water retaining capacity under that uh, when the water is being absorbed and then freezing and thawing cycles are done then what happened there is very large amount of deterioration in in that material so the, as per the durability criteria we should not go for granular uh, material granular c and d waste base we should go for cement treated base if you say that cement has to be uh, conserve and uh, we should not use more cement, then I would suggest that you go for fly ash and uh, silica few other things. And we have to check, make sure that 20 days strength should be 4.5 to 7 megapascal. Okay, that is what I can say. And it, it would be quite beneficial also. Uh, now coming over to the crack relief layer. Uh, I have already shown in the this slide that 
there is a granular crack relief layer also in case of uh, cement treated base courses because we do not want that the tensile stresses here uh, get uh, multiple uh, multiple times bigger because of uh, uh, the uh, you can say shrinkage of the cement treated base layer so we need a crack relief layer which do not allow the propagation or you can say the transference of tensile stresses to the bituminous layer. So uh, in case we are providing that crack relief layer also, then we can use construction and demolition waste there of 100 uh, mm thickness or 150 depending upon uh, the strength of the construction and demolition waste. And we have to make sure that the limiting value, that the least value should be 450 megapascal. Okay, so coming over to the bituminous bases, uh, we could use bituminous bases uh, by using construction and demolition waste along with foam bitumen or bitumen emulsion. Here, construction and demolition waste could also be there, but uh, mainly uh, we are interested in the construction and demolition waste of uh, uh, payments, already existing payments. Okay, so that kind of construction and demolition waste is called as RAP and you might have uh, attended uh, various uh, expert lectures on this thing from Dr. Maninder Singh and Dr. Uh, Ranjan. So uh, if we are using RAP along with bitumen emulsion and foam bitumen, then we have to make sure that the value of resident models should be 800 megapascal. This we have to make sure. Otherwise, we cannot we cannot use that material. Okay. So uh, now uh, I had all, earlier told you that uh, in case of base courses, we should not use uh, uh, this material on the basis of durability. But here uh, I am suggesting that we could use this thing because here the construction and demolition waste is rare and the uh, aggregates are already being coated with a thin layer of uh, asphalt. No uh, matter how hard you try to remove that asphalt from the aggregates, still a small layer of uh, asphalt would be over the aggregates, which would be sealing their whites. And as such, the aggregates here, the wrap here would be resistant against the atmospheric effects. Along with that, when we are using this kind of binder material on this, then definitely it will become more durable. So that's why here the construction and demolition waste in the form of wrap could be used. Okay, so uh, that's how we have to just see that which type of material has to be used in what layer. That is the most essential part. Otherwise, we cannot say that uh, just bring the material from somewhere and put it anywhere, mix uh, anything in it and you get the layer. You cannot do that. You have to see the size, you have to see the quality, you have to see the strength criteria for that. Uh, yeah, the point here, which I was talking about earlier, that the smaller resonant modulus values do not necessarily indicate that modified binder mixes will have inferior performance compared to unmodified mixes because even if the resonant model is smaller, that also indicates that the uh, resonant stain, the material is flexible enough and it will resist fatigue cracking. So uh, definitely uh, while calculating the uh, value of uh, fatigue life or the fatigue life of these materials, we have to make sure that there is at least uh, the limiting value of uh, uh, resonant modulus, okay? which has to be used, but uh, we should not uh, uh, focus too much upon the use of getting very high resonant modulus values because uh, then the mix will show less fatigue life because of uh, being brittle. So we have to take care this fact into account. Okay, so th this is the just exception, exception in case of uh, bituminous bases. It is not for other materials. In case of uh, a, a granular material, unbound material, or in case of cement treated uh, materials, this is not a uh, case. This is not the case. And yes, in case of cement treated material, we are not looking for this value. We are, in fact, looking for models of elasticity value. So 
uh, we are totally relieved from the uh, point of view of a cement treated material. Now, this is an example of the design of a, a payment layer uh, where you could see the design traffic is this much. And if you could see that uh, we have calculated the tensile stain and uh, over beneath the uh, bituminous layer or beneath the base layer and uh, we have also calculated the uh, compressive strains over the subgrade so these are the values and uh, this this have to be looked upon so as to calculate the value of uh, fatigue and rutting so as per this criteria we are seeing that the fatigue life of the payment is uh, 10 million standard access whereas for rutting it is 46 so definitely the payment will, will first fail because of fatigue then due to rutting okay so we have to check both the criteria otherwise we cannot say that the uh, payment is suitable uh, for the running of traffic and this thing fatigue criteria that depends upon the base so if we are using construction demolition waste in the base then definitely we have to make sure that durability aspect as well as the strength aspect okay and if we are looking for the rutting criteria then we have to make sure that at least the uh, minimum values are being achieved by the granular material or uh, cement treated subbase courses and subbed material so since we are having uh, uh, a relaxation as per this criteria so that's why it is more beneficial to use the construction and demolition waste as such as such from the site into these things just where they are lying you take them and you crush them and you use them in subgrade as well as sub base it will not harm much because i have already told about this criteria here so this is an example where you can see that I have just copied it based from some channel. If you can see here, uh, this material has been crushed uh, and it is compacted about 20 times. And then we can have this kind of material having uh, the proper value of a resonate modulus. So definitely we have to make passes and the, we have to make sure that the amount of overlap here should be at least 40% between the various uh, passings. Otherwise the material will not be compacted in a better way. Now, what is the effect of compaction on the grading? Please make uh, this thing uh, as a sh uh, sure point that if you are compacting a material and it is becoming porter, then it doesn't mean that it is reducing its uh, resilient modulus value. Resilient modulus, in fact, increase because of the density of the mix. And if the material is well graded, I'm talking just about subgrade and sub base here if the material is well graded like this then definitely it would be having a higher value of a resonant modulus so we have to make sure that the material is compacted properly and how we will check this thing that the material has been compacted properly we can take out a sample from a sand cone test of the site where it is being compacted and then we can uh, see the material and we can find out that whether it is showing a well gated curve or not. If it is showing a well gated curve, then definitely even the resonant modulus would be higher. And apart from that, this material would uh, ensure that uh, the durability of the material is also good. Otherwise, uh, uh, it, the material would be kind of uh, having more, more tendency to absorb water and that would not be quite good for the subgrade. So if the material is dense, then passage of water would be lesser and definitely we are having a uh, durable and uh, you can say strong sub subgrade as well as sub base. Apart from that, uh, the things which have to be looked upon in the case of construction demolition waste is the Flakiness index as well as specific gravity. These two parameters also tell us about uh, whether the material is suitable for uh, uh, 
construction purpose or and here i am talking specifically about uh, the recycled co concrete aggregates which have to be used in the base layers okay so the flakiness index because in case of base layers the um, failure due to fatigue could happen and under fatigue if the particles are having bigger size they could be crushed so we have to make sure that it lies beneath 30 percent okay and the specific gravity if it is more than two then it would be preferable if we check the uh, strength of these materials okay uh, in terms of uh, the added moisture content you could see here that if we are having 100 percent recycled concrete aggregates then they are giving good strength if we are uh, having uh, about uh, uh, 75 percent and the uh, rest of the material is being blended with other kind of uh, material other kind of construction demolition waste then this value will decrease so if we are uh, using the recycling plants to obtain only 100 percent recycled concrete aggregates then definitely these aggregates are having more than 2.1 uh, uh, as uh, the dry density so definitely they could be used in the base layers but if we are not able to even uh, screen them properly and uh, we are having smaller size aggregates also blend of those materials inferior material also then this value drops down but still it is approaching to two so we could have even uh, some amount of deleterious material in in between also but still uh, this material could be used as cement treated base courses also and as rap also okay then talking about uh, the brick blend if you could see here uh, if we are uh, even having other deleterious material along with bricks then the value will decrease so definitely we have to make sure that we use at least 100% uh, purely purely brick metal otherwise the strength is going to fall and we cannot so this thing shows that the brick metal at least the brick metal should not be used in the base courses we should use uh, the cement uh, recycled concrete aggregates in this case okay now the cvr values CVR values here are in the range, uh, you can see uh, from uh, uh, 30 to 70 like that. And uh, definitely this is a good CVR. So if this material is being used, if the material as such, why I'm saying as such, because it is a blend. So if the material construction demolition waste is used even as such for a subgrade, 550 centimeter of subgrade, then it would be beneficial. And uh, we can have a, a we can have a, a, you can say a very a big problem being solved of dumping this material and take transporting it to recycling plants so at least 50 to 60 percent of the material could directly be used as subgrade then coming over to the next part which is the abrasion now this slide is important for those aggregates which have to be used in the uh, base courses I, I have already told that here the uh, fatigue under fatigue the aggregates start breaking so definitely if the motor is sticking to it then we cannot use these aggregates because then the aggregates will start deteriorating okay so uh, we have to make sure that uh, as for the los angeles abrasion criteria about 43 percent of motor could be attached with this not more than this then only the construction demolition waste could be used for base courses. Now, the next slide here, if you could see that what would be the effect of masonry on the sticking masonry on the resonate modulus in case of concrete aggregates. As you can see, this is in continuation to the previous slide. As you can see, if the uh, value of uh, uh, mortar is more than the value of a resonant modulus it starts decreasing from 700 to nearly 430 or 40. more is the value more is the fall okay and 
more would be the moisture content in the layer so uh, in case of uh, um, in case of uh, uh, you can say little moisture it is not a moisture it is little moisture so more is the tendency of the material to absorb water so definitely we should make sure that uh, the mortar is not sticking to those aggregates which have to be used in the base layer especially uh, in case of uh, uh, formed bitumen and emulsion emulsified bitumen layers if it is a cement treated material then yeah it could be used but still i would say that we have to make sure that only uh, 43 point uh, mortar uh, 43% mortar should be sticking to the aggregates at the end now what are the lessons which we have learned the lessons which we have learned is that that c and d of low resonant mortar's value and having high moisture retaining tendency they could be used just at the site for further construction work they should not be uh, taken to recycling plant and that would uh, definitely solve the problem of uh, their recycling okay and even their dumping secondly the material the uh, cnt material of uh, um, uh, inferior quality somewhat inferior quality like having medium type of uh, resonant modulus value uh, could be used uh, as a cement treated surface layer okay and uh, uh, such kind of materials are like ceramic tiles, recycled aggregates, passing 10 mm sieves. These could be used as a cement treated subbase, as uh, uh, there the effect of fatigue is lesser and therefore they will not crush. And they could be even used as such when being stabilized by cement. Okay. Whereas in case of a base courses, even if they are being treated with cement, we have to make sure that the material is properly screened. Mortar should not be sticking more than 40% in that case, 43% in that case. And it should pass all the abrasion test, shape test, specific gravity test. Then it could be used in the base layer, in the either in the form of wrap or in the form of a, a cement treated material. And that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Ankit. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a very uh, wonderful lecture. Thank you. And, uh, at least I uh, enjoyed it. And if you made it more interactive with your videos that you have shown, uh, that's, that's really, really great. Now, may I request the uh, participants, if they have any question, uh, they can please type the questions in the chat box or else uh, you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you. So keeping the uh, speaker's time uh, into consideration, we'll wait for one minute's uh, time. And if there are any questions, you please go ahead. 